بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته everybody uh, I'd like to start by congratulating all of our Arabic students that are not part of exclusively this uh, broadcast but before this I teach them Arabic grammar and review uh, Quranic language they've completed a hundred days beyond the intensives today so together they've studied over 140 days and over 220 hours uh, of Arabic with me, alhamdulillah. That's quite a bit of an accomplishment and mashallah they've tolerated a lot of torture mm -hmm. and um, yes. have, have come through, persevered, mashallah. So hopefully by next Ramadan we'll be in a very different mm -hmm. level of Arabic, but we've come a long way. We've actually come quite a profoundly long way, mashallah. So um, today I want to talk to you about this really, really beautiful ayah and it's got this same theme that I've been talking to you about nouns and verbs. Um, I'll explain the, the basics again, but it's it, the lesson is so beautiful, and it's it actually has to do with uh, forgiveness, uh, Allah's forgiveness, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and this is the ayah uh, 33 of Surah Al-Anfal, mm -hmm. the the eighth surah of the Quran. To tell you something about the eighth surah of the Quran, um, uh, it is about it's pretty much the whole thing is dedicated to commenting on one thing, um, and that is what happened after Badr. So Badr was the first major battle mm -hmm. in the Prophet's life وسلم, and the Muslims um, and they were victorious and then there were some events that occurred right after that and Allah wanted to give us guidance on how to deal with those events. So pretty much all of Badr was how to uh, Allah's perspective on Allah's comments on the battle and well, how the Muslims should carry themselves moving mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's what Surah Al-Anfal, the eighth surah is about. Um, so let's go to the screen and I'll, I'll show you some things, inshallah. Uh, can you share the screen, Jawad, please? Yes. Let me just give you a rough translation first so you, we, we can build this step by step. Um, and one way you can translate this, this is not the official translation, but at least give us an idea. And Allah w wouldn't wouldn't sorry be where's the l why why it's i'm fasting that's why that's my excuse okay allah wouldn't be one um wouldn't be torturing them while you're in their midst and Allah wouldn't, again the yellow is missing, wouldn't be one to torture them while they are seeking forgiveness. Okay, now let's replace the word torturing with punishing. Mm. Yeah, torturing some people. Yeah. So Allah wouldn't be punishing them while you're in their midst, and Allah wouldn't be one to one to punish uh, them while they are seeking forgiveness. So there's two times Allah says He wouldn't punish, mm -hmm. right? And so Allah wouldn't be punishing them here, mm -hmm. and Allah wouldn't be punishing them again here, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, now I'll, I'll put the Arabic next to the English. This part, the first part, and Allah. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ Here we go. That's, and Allah wouldn't be punishing them. Mm -hmm. Okay. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ Cut that out. Um, and that would be, Allah wouldn't be one to punish them. Wait, sorry, let me fix the orientation here. There we go. Now, let's put the other thing pieces in place too. Wa anta fihim while you are in their midst. So this part right here, this means while you're in their midst. Mm -hmm. And then wa hum yastaghfirun, the last part of the ayah, that's while they are seeking forgiveness. Okay, mm -hmm. so these are the components of the ayah. Now the two things that are very similar is 
مَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ and وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ Okay? Now, this is a fi'l. So when Allah talked about punishing here, He used a verb. Okay? And then, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ عَذَّبَ يُعَذِّبُ تَعْذِيبًا فَهُوَ مُعَذِّبٌ This is a noun. So he talked about punishments twice. But once he talked about it as a fi'l, and then he other time he talked about it as an, uh, as an ism. Right? Then... What's coming right after that is a sentence that is basically, it has uh, um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? And then the next one has a sentence that has us, Wahum yastaghfirun, mm-hmm. right? Now, let's understand this. The first part of it, let me tell you the lesson here, then we'll go to the language. Allah is telling the Meccans that they are acting like the people of Nuh. Mm-hmm. Or they're acting like the people of Salih and Shu'aib or the, the rebellious nation of the pharaohs. Mm-hmm. And Allah is telling them over and over. He's already told them in Makkah. Because this is in, this I told you is, this surah came after Badr. Mm-hmm. So they're already in Medina. Yeah. Which means they've already tried to kill the Prophet. Mm-hmm. They've already denied two-thirds of the Quran. Mm-hmm. They've already tried every insult against the Prophet, including violence. Mm-hmm. And now they've actually gone to war with him. So they have gotten to the point where usually what does Allah do with any nation that goes that far? He destroys them. He destroys them. So the question arises, why aren't the Meccans being destroyed? If Allah does this with every prophet that comes, when these nations get out of hand, they get annihilated. Mm -hmm. So then why is it that Mecca is getting a pass? Mm -hmm. They should get destroyed because they're doing the same thing that the previous nations did and then some, Mm -hmm. right? Allah gave the reason. He gave a unique reason. Allah would never be one to torture them while you're still in their midst. Meaning, so long as you, Prophet them, are alive, I will not punish them. That's not going to happen. So the reason they're not being annihilated is not because they're better, or they're not as bad, or they don't deserve it. No, they deserve it. The only reason they're not getting it is because rahmatan lil alameen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the mercy and the loving care from Allah that was sent to all mankind, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is still alive and in their midst, in the region. Mm-hmm. That's why they're not being destroyed. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Okay, so that's the first part. Do you get the, the general idea? Yeah. Right? So they think the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is such a nuisance. He's such a problem. He's created such a rift in Mecca or in the region. And we have to end this problem of Islam. Mm-hmm. Right? And Allah is telling us, actually, the only reason they haven't been annihilated and Allah hasn't punished them is the only reason they're still alive is because you're alive. Mm-hmm. That, that's why they're still alive. They don't even know. They think their problem is you. Actually, the only reason they're breathing is you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you see that the Allah's response here? Mm-hmm. Now, and this was telling the believers also, you know, that Allah has given the Prophet ﷺ a special rahmah mm-hmm. towards his people that was not... Allah did not grant that to previous nations because the Meccans have already done enough to, you know, to, be, to, to warrant being executed like the previous nations were. Anyway, then Allah adds another dimension. So this was the first one. He wouldn't be punishing them because you're with them. You're in their midst. The second, and Allah would never be one to punish them while they are what? Seeking forgiveness. forgiveness. This is Allah telling us that there are some people in Mecca that are actually still seeking forgiveness. So even though there were people on the battlefield fighting the Muslims, there were also a bunch of people in Mecca who were held there against their will or who were secretly Muslim Mm -hmm. or who will become Muslim and seek forgiveness. And Allah knows about them. And Allah knows that they are still there. Mm -hmm. And so long as they are still, even some people are still seeking forgiveness, Allah will not punish the entire nation. And this is Allah telling us another formula. Allah does not wipe out a nation until no one is left that seeks forgiveness. forgiveness. So one reason Allah will destroy, wouldn't destroy them is the Prophet is still alive. The other reason is actually that there are still people asking for forgiveness in that nation. Right? 
Now go back. This one is a fi'l. A fi'l, a verb. And a verb, I told you before, is temporary. Right? Just like the Prophet ﷺ is actually among them temporarily. The Prophet is not going to be in Mecca Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the Arabian Peninsula, the region Hijaz forever. So this security that Allah would not punish them so long as you're with them is temporary. And the temporary safety is being described with the temporary wording. Which is the the verb is temporary. Mm -hmm. Get it? But then Allah gave us a rule that is forever. It's not just for them. Allah has always had this rule. He's not just talking about the special circumstance of the Prophet ﷺ and the people of Mecca. But now Allah is going to tell us something about Himself that has always been there. And when you describe something about yourself that's always there, a constant, then you use a noun. So Allah wouldn't be, actually a literal translation here would be, let me retranslate this. Allah wouldn't be their punisher. Their punisher. Mm -hmm. Now when you describe someone as a punisher, Mm -hmm. then this is a constant quality. And inside this word, there's an there's an illusory reference. There's a it's it's a it's a hint Mm -hmm. at Allah has always had this rule with all the previous nations, whether they had a prophet or not. Mm -hmm. Allah would never destroy a nation and uh, so long as what was going on? So long as some people there were still seeking forgiveness. forgiveness. Even if you could say home is used in Arabic for more than two. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. But as, as a general rule, if, if, if even a, a person is left that's seeking Allah's forgiveness, two people are left, five people are left, mm-hmm. then Allah will not destroy that people. Mm-hmm. Allah will not destroy them. Mm-hmm. Right? And that's a mercy of Allah. And we, you know, why, why did Allah destroy previous nations? Allah destroyed previous nations after after examining every single heart that was left alive. Mm-hmm. This is why the prophets were told to escape with the believers, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, before nations were destroyed, Musa was told to escape with the Israelites. Alayhi um, salam. No. Nuh alayhi salam was told to escape, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Lut alayhi salam escaped with his family. So there's a theme in the Quran of people escaping before the nation is destroyed. Because Allah didn't just say, oh, these are non-Muslims by the outside label. Mm-hmm. Allah checks everybody's heart and knows these people don't want forgiveness. They don't care about forgiveness and they will never want forgiveness. And that's the only kind of people that have, de- de- they're determined to be stubborn and, and not humbled. Those are the people that are left in the nation. Then Allah destroys them, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So this has always been the case. Mm-hmm. But then the thing is, because this is a permanent thing, you would think that here, yastaghfirun could also have been istaghfara yastaghfiru istighfaran fahuwa mustaghfiruna. Hum would have been the mubtada and mustaghfiruna, the ism, the noun, would have been the khabar. But Allah chose to make this khabar a fi'l. This is also a verb. Let me put the seeking forgiveness over here. They are seeking forgiveness is also a verb. And a verb is what? It's temporary, temporary yeah. but there's other qualities. Other qualities I'm going to highlight now. A verb is incomplete. Mm-hmm. A verb is ongoing. And a verb is literally imperfect. Mm-hmm. Because when I say I am eating, mm-hmm. it's ongoing. Yeah. It's temporary, but more importantly, it's imperfect. Yeah. Because perfect means it was already done. It's mm-hmm. completed. Mm-hmm. But it's a work in progress. Right? Mm-hmm. So what Allah did by saying yastaghfirun as opposed to what? Mustaghfirun. If Allah said mustaghfirun, Allah would have been saying, Allah would not destroy them unless there were some people that were constantly making forgiveness. Mm-hmm. They, were, they were constantly seeking forgiveness. Mm-hmm. But wahum yastaghfirun, they are seeking forgiveness at least once in a while, sometimes, mm-hmm. not constantly necessarily. Yeah. Here's the other linguistic thing that's incredible. If I say they, like the nation, mm-hmm. are, or are, are the people, let's say the people. The people are, um, let's say, working. Workers. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. The people are workers. workers. Okay? 
And if I say the people are working, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Let's take, let's understand this example, okay? When you say the people are workers, mm -hmm. then you are commenting on each and every one of them being a worker. worker. Mm -hmm. When you say the people are working, you can actually get away with not talking about all the people. Right. So, if I, for example, say, let, let, let me get, make it, bring it closer to home. I, another example came to mind. The students in class, mm -hmm. the students are um, hard are, are workers, mm -hmm. and the students are working. working. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when I say the students are workers, I have 30 students. I'm commenting about all of them. They're each, each and every one of them is a hard worker. Yeah. Okay. When I say the students are working, maybe I left them with a project in the classroom. Yeah. And the, I left the classroom. The principal said, what are you students doing? And I said, the students are what? Working. working. But I know for a fact that when I said the students are working, am I saying in my mind that every one of them is necessarily working no. or working at the same level? No. no. I'm saying so long as enough of them are working, I can still speak for the whole and say the students are working. working. But when I say the students are workers, I'm commenting on each individual. This is a comment on each in a comment on each individual, yeah? Mm -hmm. But this is a comment overall. This is an overall comment. So some of them may be slacking off, but I can still say for the whole class, yeah. they're working, mm -hmm. right? So for example, right now the dream program is going on, right? Mm -hmm. And I say we're making progress. Yeah. The students are making progress. When I say the students are making progress, am I talking about every single student or overall? Overall. Overall, because I don't know if well, a particular student's not making progress. Mm -hmm. I don't know that, right? Yeah. But I say my students are sincere. Now I used a, a, an adjective, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Or my students are hard workers. Now I'm confidently making a comment about what? The whole group. The whole group which I, I'm not making. <laughs> Some of y'all are lazy. Okay. So, <laughs> so now, وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ mm -hmm. By Allah using the fi'il, mm -hmm. He didn't make a comment on everyone. Mm -hmm. He's saying overall, so long as it can be said, so this, the act of istighfar is happening. Mm -hmm. And it could be happening by a few people. Yeah. And it could be happening sporadically, not constantly. Even then, Allah would never punish them. And uh, the, where did the never come from? The fact that the mu'adhibahum, mm -hmm. the meme is being used. Yeah. Allah would not become their punisher. Allah would never ever punish them, even if they are temporarily or imperfectly seeking Allah's forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Allah didn't say the only way you cannot be forgiven is if you're constantly making istighfar. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So now bring this to Makkah, this whole scenario. Allah is telling the Prophet ﷺ, this is one of the most important lessons in Qur'an in understanding the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. A lot of people don't understand this lesson. The, the people of Makkah have gone to war with the Prophet ﷺ. You don't, you don't need to see the Arabic anymore. So the, the people of Makkah have gone to war with the Prophet ﷺ multiple times. Mm -hmm. And at this point, you get to say that Makkah is the enemy. Yeah. Right? Because mm -hmm. they, they came at us, they tried to kill the Prophet, they came at us at Badr. Then they caused, they nearly killed them at Uhud. Then they, they uh, laid siege to Medina and Ahzab. Uh, so they've done several treacherous attempts, yeah. right? And they've worked with the, the, the violating tribes, the Jewish yeah. tribes in Medina to try to kill the Prophet from within. So I said, um, they tried to kill him at Hudaybiyah. Like, I mean, they're thirsty for the Prophet's wood, yeah. right? So you get to say Makkah is the okay. enemy. So, you know, when two countries are at war mm -hmm. and you see somebody wearing the enemy's uniform, yeah. then you don't say maybe he's a good person. You still shoot, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because when you're at war, then every one of, every one of them is, mm -hmm. a, enemy. is an enemy, right? Well, the Muslims were about to attack Makkah and Hudaybiyah. And Allah said, وَلَوْلَا رِجَالٌ مُؤْمِنُونَ وَنِسَاءٌ مُؤْمِنَاتٌ لَمْ تَعْلَمُوهُمْ had it not been for believing men and women that you don't even know about. Mm -hmm. That you don't even know about. And tata'uhum. You would have trampled all over them considering them the enemy. Mm -hmm. And then uh, an ugliness would have cast itself on you and you wouldn't have even known because you killed innocents. Mm -hmm. In other words, Allah did not let the worst people, 
The, how are they the worst people? They tried to kill our messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They heard the Quran from the Prophet's voice, and they rejected it for more than anybody else. They heard more Quran than Medina did. They heard two thirds of the Quran, right? Yeah. They saw miracles. They met him on the battlefield. They got forgiven. Their soldiers got forgiven by him after going to war with him. The the amount of things that they've experienced that should give them in more than enough justification not only to become Muslim but no justification left to remain kafir. And yet Allah says you can't make a blanket statement about them. Some of them inside might still be believers and you don't know about them, I know about them. Right? And I won't punish them until at least some of them are still seeking forgiveness and you might never know them. This is important for us because we like to think of an entire nation as an enemy sometimes because of politics. Right, so we say the uh, the Pakistanis will say India is the enemy. India will say Pakistan is the enemy. The the Bengalis are the enemy. The Americans will say the Iraqis are the enemy. The Iraqis will say the Americans are the enemy, or somebody somebody's enemy, yeah. right? And politics is its own world, right? And there may be animosities between militaries and governments and espionage and all of it. That's a reality of life. But as an individual, we don't we don't wish for Allah's destruction to fall on an entire nation. That's not a thing. You know, we, some people in, in the month of Ramadan are making dua against, Ya Allah, destroy this country, you know, down their planes. I often tell the story, it's, it's a crazy story about the Taraweeh prayer, right? Allahumma ahlik al amrikan asqit ta'iratihim, right? I was in this country and the guy was making Taraweeh prayer and like he raised his hand in dua. And every, you know, most people don't even know Arabic. They're like, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I know Arabic. And he's like, Ya Allah, destroy the Americans, down their planes. I was like, I got a flight tomorrow. <laughs> no, I mean, bro. No. Hey, put your hands down. Like, uh, what? What is he saying? He actually did that? Yeah, he did. But like the, the idea being there's war and there's atrocities. And because of that, now we want the entire nation to be destroyed. Right? Mm-hmm. Fir'aun, Allah didn't destroy right away. Yeah. Right? The, 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 the Makkans Allah did not destroy And they deserve destruction far more than anyone else Because they didn't just commit crimes against humanity They committed crimes against Allah's messenger yeah. But even then you don't get to make a sweeping comment About an entire nation You can make a comment about the tyrants of that nation You can make a comment about the, the, the oppressors of that nation But you cannot make a comment about the entire nation mm-hmm. You know, that's not justified by Allah's book You know and so Allah gave us this profound reality. Allah wouldn't be one to torture them while some of them are still seeking forgiveness. Again, this is not an excuse from justified you know, conflict. And if a nation transgresses against another, tramples on its borders, does whatever, and a nation does, does something to defend itself. That's a different reality. That's a worldly reality. But us as a people don't wish the end of another people or they should become extinct. Because all of them are like this or all of them are like that. This is not a this is not a permissible thing in our religion. Plus, Allah says, you know, um uh in, in Surah Al-Fatih itself, he even hints at the fact that there are some people that haven't yet accepted the faith, mm-hmm. but they will. Yeah. There so there's not just oh Muslim and non-Muslim, Allah also knows the future Muslim, yeah. the future believer. Mm-hmm. And you don't get to condemn the innocent future believer who's not a believer yet because Allah knows that they will become a believer, right? So there's this, this you know, subtlety that the Sahaba were taught after they've been through so much, they've been through wars. They've seen those people try to kill them and their family. And even then Allah is telling them to calm down. Even then Allah is telling them, no, you don't get to bring Allah's wrath on them until the final time came and then Surah Tawbah came. And in Surah Tawbah, Allah said, there may still be innocence here in Mecca, because Mecca was, Mecca was conquered, right? The Prophet conquered Mecca, yeah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Muslims now have, have taken over Mecca. And now there may be people that are evil in Mecca, mm-hmm. and there may also be good people in Mecca. Mm-hmm. There's still a mix. Mm-hmm. So what do we do? Allah says, now you have four months. To make an announcement to the public. You have four months to consider Islam, to hear what's being said. You can pronounce your Islam. If you don't like it, you can leave the region because Allah's punishment, there's a deadline for it, four months. After four months, anybody who's still here will be dealt with like the nation of Nuh was dealt with or the nation of Salih was dealt with. They will be executed. Like Allah's punishment time has come, but after four months. right? So that was Allah's way of separating the believer from the disbeliever, you know, clearly in the city of Makkah. 
So Allah issued that policy actually in the, in the time of the Prophet It was a pretty profound lesson, but I wanted to highlight this because uh, Allah's forgiveness is so vast that He would never ever punish so long as even some people are making istighfar. And if Allah's forgiveness is so vast, then a person shouldn't feel that their seeking forgiveness isn't worth it. Like maybe there's a million, 10 million people in a city and six people are making istighfar and they're the reason that entire city hasn't had a flood. Mm -hmm. It may be like that, right? Mm -hmm. So istighfar is so powerful that it might be rescuing millions of lives. So why do you underestimate the power of your own istighfar, mm -hmm. right? If you, if you and I are seeking Allah's forgiveness, we should not think it's worthless or that, you know, Allah will not, Allah won't listen to mine. I mean, I'm, I'm a horrible person. Obviously, the reason you're making istighfar is because you made a mistake. So your mistake doesn't disqualify you for istighfar. Your mistake qualifies you for istighfar. So the shaitan comes to you and your own twisted thinking comes to you and says, well, I've messed up, therefore I can't do istighfar. Uh, that's exactly why you should be doing istighfar, dude. Yeah. yeah? And then, then underestimate your istighfar. But if you study istighfar in the Quran, then you, you appreciate the, how much Allah values this thing. How much it and how much of the world looks the way it does on the outside? The, the map of the world looks the way it does because there are people making istighfar. Subhanallah. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us people of istighfar uh, and and accept our istighfar, and may Allah Azza wa Jal not make us of those that He punishes individually or as a nation. Barakallahu li walakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. guys. Remember, do your best, and I'll do the rest. Assalamu alaikum, guys. Even more.